going to speak to Prof. Sidney Stevenson from the Department of Plant Science. Welcome, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, Prof, can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Um, I went like a typical academic from doing uh, a degree in anything to do with natural sciences, so botany, zoology, entomology. Um, and through into my honours degree, um, got funding to do masters, carried on with PhD uh, at UKZN, um, and then I did five years of uh, postdoctoral research uh, at University of Cape Town, um, and then was interviewed and granted the position here, starting as a senior lecturer in Kwakwa Campus, University of Free State, and then last year, um, the end of last year, became associate professor. So, uh, pretty much a typical academic journey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Prof. And then, what are you currently working on? Uh, currently, we have several projects working on uh, invasive plant species research uh, and the impacts that they have on the environment in the Muliti Drakensberg. Uh, so, our high alpine grasslands are getting invaded by um, uh, these species that have come from other countries, either. Uh, purposely introduced or accidentally introduced and they're now taking over grazing lands and lowering our biodiversity and affecting ecosystem functioning. Um, and then my other passion is pollination ecology and interactions between plants and animals um, and uh, yeah, discovering uh, the pollinators of plants we have never studied before in that way. Okay, coming to pollination. Uh, we have seen that the bee play a major role. Are there any other species that also play part in pollination? Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, bees, and particularly honeybees, is only one species that play an important role in pollination. Uh, just on the bees themselves, there are many solitary bees that don't live in colonies. Uh, way more species than um, the honeybees uh, that play a role in pollination, especially in our alpine areas. Um, I specifically have studied mammal pollination, uh, so um, uh, typically the plants have flowers that are on the ground, have lots of nectar, uh, smell funky like sour milk or caramel or even burnt plastic. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just studying those um, plants that are pollinated usually by mice, elephant shrews, even genets and mongoose. Um, and then for my PhD, I did a lot of um, observations of beetle pollinators on proteas. Um, and we discovered uh, a few years ago here with colleagues from the University of Quirin um, a new pollination system for Africa, which is lizard pollination wow. uh, in the mountains here, just by Kwakwa. Okay. Yeah. Prof, can you share with us, like, enlighten us about cross pollination? and self-pollination? Okay, so cross-pollination, um, a flower would receive pollen uh, from a flower from a different plant, so they have a different genetic material. Um, whereas self-pollination is when um, a pollinator might uh, transfer pollen from um, the anthers of a flower onto the stigma of the same flower, or from the anthers of a flower on the same plant. And so technically then, uh, the genetic material is the same, and it leads to what we call inbreeding, uh, which can be very um, bad for plant um, offspring in terms of uh, some uh, more lethal or diseased um, carrying genes and things might be expressed because of uh, what we call increased homozygosity, where the offspring have the same um, uh, alleles or, or recessive alleles or sorry, for um, a particular uh, deleterious. Um, uh, genetic uh, defect or something like that. So over generations, if you have more and more self-pollination, then you will have less productivity, less flowers, um, dwarf plants or plants that are less productive, uh, lower growth, all these type of things. So cross-pollination is extremely uh, important and more beneficial um, to the plants than self Wow. Thank you, bro. And then are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? 
So um, we're trying to address these gaps, but uh, it, there's a lot more to do just in terms of how how our how, how kind vegetation systems, um, ecosystems um, uh, function. Uh, it's a very uh, difficult environment to work in. Uh, if you can think of the weather conditions on top of mountains, um, and so there's a big gap there in terms of uh, pollination activity uh, on top of mountains, uh, and also in terms of um, how invasive species are going to be uh, moving up mountains and how they um, are going to affect the functioning of, of the alpine flora uh, eventually. And we're trying to ad ad address these. Uh, we've got a new research station that is being built on top of the mountain, uh, and uh, yeah, we're trying to encourage more and more research up there. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's, it's more, there's a lot of gaps in terms of the impacts of a lot of um, invasives and uh, uh, basic degradation of our environment and stuff on, on the ecosystems. Thank you, Prof. And then what role can technology play in the field of uh, plant science? So with technology, what in my experience, I've used a lot of uh, camera traps, so remote cameras, uh, that will take photographs and videos when they detect motion or infrared, um, or they can be said to take um, photographs at set time intervals. And so we've been using those to um, uh, track the behavior and uh, pollinate and visitation to, to plants. Um, we've also been using them as remote weather stations because they are taking photographs and can uh, we can then see if it's hailing, if it's raining, if it's sunny uh, or snowy and things like that. As well as um, most cameras will take temperature readings. Uh, so we've had a lot of those cameras up on mountains as um, and they're monitoring the microclimate basically, as well as insect diversity, mammal diversity, uh, interactions between plants and animals. Um, in terms of plant breeding, um, it's not my field, but uh, you can, there's a lot of technology being used in greenhouses for detecting uh, diseased plants in areas that need attention uh, for irrigation. Um, uh, we've also used a lot of satellite imagery uh, to look at um, the distribution and encroachment by invasive species um, and uh, yeah, vegetation mapping. So what we call NDVI is so looking at vegetation indices by um, how much green light is being reflected uh, from the vegetation in different areas. Uh, so yeah, lots of scope. We've also been dappling in machine learning, uh, so helping us look at terabytes and terabytes of data uh, to pick out changes um, from our photographs in terms of um, then detecting an insect that has come to a plant or something like that. Uh, just to uh, sh kind of shorten the processing time yes, of all of this data. Okay, yeah. now thanks a lot, bro. And then, in terms of climate change, what impact does it have on plants and your general study on, on that? Mm -hmm. So, if I can use the example of our mountain system here, yes. uh, with climate change and global warming, temperatures are warming. And so plants that are adapted to warmer temperatures are slowly encroaching and moving up the mountains as the temperatures warm. Um, and so this is a problem for our specialized species that are living in these extreme uh, colder environments at high elevations on the mountains, where with global warming, they're being pushed up and up and up the mountain. Eventually, they're not going to have anywhere to go to um, reach their climatic zones that they are adapted to. Uh, so we might be looking at um, uh, quite a rapid loss of species in future if the climate continues to warm and these species are being pushed up mountains and then um, nowhere else to go in order to get to that um, their, their climatic zones. So it's having a huge impact. We are also seeing then um, species that are encroaching, so specifically invasive species, but also some and native species that was changing fire regimes and um, farming practices and uh, management uh, and then the global warming we see them moving into the mountains and these woody invasive species of trees are taking over the grasslands as well um, and so if this continues to happen they're going to take over and transform 
uh, grass lands into more woody environments, which is bad for grazing and uh, our natural ecosystems in, in mountains. Wow. And Prof, do you, what message can you say to aspiring researchers? Um, <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, I think just don't give up. Uh, there's a lot of difference that we can make, <clears throat> but it takes it takes time. It takes connections. Um, I would definitely encourage everybody to widen their network as much as possible. That has helped me a lot in my career. Uh, in terms of connecting with people, volunteer as research assistants, um, and just get out there, get experience. Um, the more that you can build your CV with experience in different fields uh, and with different methods in the field that you're interested in um, is, is the best. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, connections, putting yourself out there, um, and yeah, re reaching out to people. Kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then, Prof, coming back to your study uh, about those lizards as pollinators, mm -hmm. do you have specific uh, name for them? Or? Uh, they're called droplets, they're crag lizards. Okay. So, so they live in the crevices in the rocks. But um, yeah, this, this species that we found visiting the plants here is specific to this region, and then yes. we've got different species down the Drakensberg. Um, it's, yeah, just They've got their different territories down the Drakensberg. But yeah, Drakensberg crack is. Oh, it's yeah. very interesting. <laughs> and then, Pro, uh, apart from research, what are you interested in? Uh, sure. I used to and I'm trying to pick it up again, but Ultimate Frisbee, I don't know if you've heard about that, as a sport. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not a professional player, but I do like to play it as a hobby. Um, so I just. Um, so ultimate frisbee, and then uh, personal interests is also uh, crocheting, <laughs> hiking, being in the mountains. I'm, I'm not a good hiker, but I, I like just being outside, outdoors. Um, in terms of yeah, those interests and in exploring, uh, trying to get around the world, you know, trying to experience different um, uh, landscapes and, and nature and cultures. Thank you so much, Prof, for sharing with us. We really appreciate your time.